Welcome everyone to this summary of the 25th monthly content update for Horizon 5. This month brings new wheels, new body kits, and Event Lab 2.0. And we'll be getting to all of that and more after we run through the festival playlist. So to start us off for overall rewards, the BMW 850 CSI returns to Horizon. This one was a late seasonal reward for Horizon 4 as well. I don't know why they keep leaving it for so late in the game's life. These are cool cars. And speaking of cool cars, the Gunther Works 911 comes back for 160 points this month as well. Moving into summer, you're going to start seeing our new and returning car theme here with the 2021 M3. Great to see these newer sports cars continuing to come to the game. And then for 40 points, we can also pick up the AMG GT again. You'll see three event labs this week. This is, after all, a month themed around event labs. And to compensate for that, just two championships this week, alongside a special treasure stunt and photo challenge as well. And then the Forzathon shop has the cover car as well as the Cerberus Speed 12. Then in autumn, we've got every Horizon player's favorite type of car, an electric SUV. The BMW iX comes to Horizon for 20 points, alongside the Emery 356 for 40. Shout out to my mod Magnus, who made it into the Event Lab playlist this week, alongside a couple of other big names in the Event Lab scene. And make sure you do Mudslinger's Scramble to get the new Rivian R1T. We're back to three seasonal championships this week as well. Another photo challenge and treasure hunt for some easy credits and points. And then the Forzathon shop has the Koenigsegg Regera and McLaren 570S. Winter then brings probably my favorite new car of the series, the 2023 BMW M2. These have always been some of my favorite BMWs, and this comes alongside another returning favorite, the E92 M3 GTS. We're continuing the trend of having HTCC tracks in the playlist with Green's Onyx Bridge this week, alongside GT Denies Village Rally. And then all three PR stunts are drift zones this week, where you need to take the FDRX7, another two championships, and another treasure hunt and photo challenge. No complaints here, these are easy to complete. And then in the Forzathon shop, we've got the Mercedes-Benz SSK and Audi R8 V10. Then to wrap up our month with spring, our last new BMW is the i4 for 20 points, alongside the Porsche 550. Another set of three event labs this week, and make sure you do Stadium Supercross to get the new Rivian R1S as well. You'll need a Viper to do this month's speed zones. And we don't have a treasure hunt this week. Instead, the Horizon Tour is up for eight points. And our last Forzathon shop has the Bugatti Veyron and Halo Warthog, alongside the Halo-themed horn. So this month, we've got six all-new cars coming through the playlist, as well as one returning from Horizon 4. But there is actually one more car coming to Horizon 5 soon that was announced today, and that is one of the Motorsport cover cars, the E-Ray. Players who buy Forza Motorsport, or even just play it on Game Pass, will get the Corvette E-Ray in their Horizon garage whenever they're able to play Motorsport. So on the 5th for players with Premium Edition and Early Access, and as soon as the 10th for all others. So in all, that is eight more cars coming to Horizon 5 over this next month, which is great. I love to see that they're just still keeping up the pace with these new car drops. And we, of course, have a lot more to talk about here, including three body kits for BMWs that are coming this month, which includes two AC Schnitzer kits for the 2015 i8 and the 2018 M5. And then Horizon finally gets the Forza wide body for the 850 CSI that's coming back this month. And then to keep things coming, Vorsteiner is bringing 20 new rim styles to the game this month as well. I'll throw up all the model names on the side of the screen here if you want to check these out for yourself. And I actually went and counted up all of the aftermarket wheels in game now. 
And with these 20 new additions, we will have 360 aftermarket rims in Forza. Absolutely amazing. All right, guys, now it's time to get to the main course of the update here this month. The reason for it being called Horizon Creatives Event Lab 2.0. This is an update consisting of about four to five major features that players have been asking for since just about day one. And let's start with Event Lab Island. This is a two kilometer by two kilometer completely flat concrete platform surrounded by the ocean off the coast of the main map. The platform also has its own attachment nodes so you can extend the platform with new massive 0.5 kilometer extensions. And because this is far away from the main map and the game doesn't have to load in all that extra stuff, Event Lab Island also comes with a higher prop budget. This alone is so amazing. We finally don't have to worry about picking the right starting spot for custom tracks and making sure they go in the right direction, having to deal with trees and power lines or anything else in our way. We can now build custom sky tracks with full freedom and they can be more detailed and run better on lower end hardware. This is massive and is going to blow the doors wide open for custom detailed event lab creations. But of course, this is just one of the new features coming with the 2.0 update. Let's talk about selection mode. We now have a multi-select option that lets us grab multiple props at a time and manipulate them all as one group. So you can pick up a whole custom creation you made and then duplicate it, rotate it, or delete it all at once, which is such a big quality of life improvement. And this kind of coincides with another really big new feature, prefabs. This one has been so highly requested and they are actually going above and beyond with this as well. We can now group objects together to create a single prefab prop. Finally, this is going to save creators so much time, but it gets better. These saved prefabs can be shared with the same share code system we use for just about everything else. And you can then browse these prefabs within the Event Lab Builder and even bookmark your favorites. What this means is that now creators can build out whole sets of prefabs for others to use. Things like having a full pack of custom skyscrapers and buildings, full nature sets with pre-built forest tiles or rock formations, a Hot Wheels style track pack with prefabbed corners, straights, and elevation changes, I mean, the possibilities for this are genuinely endless, and being able to flesh out your creations by just searching for already made prefabs is going to speed up event lab creation dramatically, as well as improving the quality of event labs across the board. And it's opening up a whole new path for creators to create these packs for others to use. This is already so big, but we aren't done yet. Guys, I asked for this feature over a year ago in my video, 10 small changes that would make a big impact on Horizon 5. And I'm far from the only one who has suggested this. Custom flyers are finally here. This is amazing for discoverability and searchability and just organization of all of these event labs. What this means is that creators can now take and upload a custom photo of their event to be used as the flyer image when searching event labs. It might seem like a smaller change, but it is going to help people find and sort through these so much easier because you now will get a window into what the map looks like without having to spend all that time loading it up just to see if it's even worth playing. Massive QOL improvement here, and there are more. Finally, we can browse more than 15 event labs at once. This one always drove me crazy. No matter what you searched, the UI would never show you more than 15 event labs. So if you're looking at a creator's full portfolio, well, you couldn't. You'd just see their newest 15 and everything after that was cut off. You'd have to search for it more specifically. For more quality of life improvements, new attachment nodes have been added to existing props, and we now have multiple node sizes, small, medium, and large, instead of just the big ones we had before. We'll have to play around with this one 
one to see if they're worth it. Right now, the attachment nodes can be really frustrating to work with, but maybe this is the improvement that they needed. Next up, we get a couple more checkpoint options. We can now pick between flags or red or blue flares for our checkpoints. So that's a nice little bonus. And then it looks like we can also adjust weather and time of day while building, which is fantastic, especially for people who try to build night maps. It's always hard to know what your lighting is gonna look like without going through the tedious process of backing out to test it. And now you don't have to do that. And finally, for Event Lab, this update wouldn't be complete without some new props. And oh boy, are we getting some new props. Five new prop sets are being added here. First is the gas station set, which comes with things like signs, pumping stations, and more. Then there's a racing pack, which has rumble strips, new fences, garages, and more. Alongside this, we're also getting a motorway set with highway junctions, bridges, lane markers, and more. And then finally, some awesome more QOL focused sets, like giant land plots for different surfaces, like grass, snow, and of course, tarmac. And then we also get a primitive shapes pack with well, a bunch of shapes like cubes and cones and stuff so we can get extra creative and custom with our builds. Folks, this is massive. You know, I think this is kind of timed perfectly against motorsport here where they're just kind of saying, hey, motorsport's almost here and it's gonna have great racing, but Horizon still has endless amounts of unique event lab content and we just made it so much better. So maybe it's worth sticking around. Now, of course, Event Lab 2.0 still doesn't tick every single box here that players have hoped for. I think some features I would still like to see are the ability to sort Event Labs into folders. So, you know, if I have a 5, 10, and 20 lap variant of a track, it'd be nice to just put those all under one banner. I'd love to also see the ability to allow multiple people to work on an event lab, but I know that's probably not too feasible at this point. And then finally, for me, I think the biggest feature I would still love to have that I know is probably too hard to do at this point again, is the ability to set event labs as open lobbies so people can enter and leave them whenever they want, as long as the host is still in the map. I think that would be kind of the one extra thing that would truly transform Event Lab and make it just about everything I want it to be. But with that, of course, what we got is still incredible. Event Lab creating is about to get so much better, and I cannot wait to see what people make with this. And I think I'm gonna have to spend some more time getting back into it myself. And with that, we are just about wrapped up for this month's update, with only one main thing left to do, look at the teaser for next month. It's spooky season, and we've got some themed living world changes coming alongside Horizon's most requested car. Huh, I wonder what that could be. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Stick around on the channel because on Monday, I will finally be able to share my thoughts on Motorsport after being able to play a preview build of it over the past week. So make sure you watch for that upload on Monday. It's gonna be a big one. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.